Okay guys, so welcome back to the workbench. Dan here as always. Uh, I got a SP SD40M-2 on the bench that we're going to be working on. I want to create a small video series on this locomotive covering some uh, various weathering effects that I'm going to be doing to this engine to create what you see to match the prototype. So, the real locomotive, uh, NREX 2738, is seen here on a CSX train in uh, 2015, recently. And uh, I chose this particular prototype. A customer asked me to model one of these engines for him with the new Atherin SD40M-2 release and I'm more than happy to do so for video purposes of course. Um, <clears throat> as you can see the paint fading on this is something that gets a lot of modelers attention. It's something that I don't see modeled enough and it's a, another technique that a lot of people are very confused about or in the dark about so I'm going to try to explain how I accomplish this look. I've done it before it's not that hard. Um, so I'll just try to explain this to the best of my ability here. So first things first what I'm going to be doing in this video uh, to start is the fuel tank effects and the air tank effects. Now if we look at the back, I'll try to zoom in on this, uh, excuse the poor quality, but do you guys see the bleeding paint or the chipped paint on the fuel tank? There's the original gray. It's a very clean separation there. And then there's on the top, you get the old gray or the, uh, the primer gray bleeding through. That's what we're going to be uh, working on first also on the air tank as well that uh, bleached paint that uh, quite frankly is on the entire car body of the engine itself um, but it's the most severe and most noticeable in the fuel tank so that's what we're going to start on first okay so as we pan out here I go to the workbench I'm going to zoom in on this model I have the Atherin SD40M-2 this is the new release uh, it's a beautiful model. Uh, it has a lot of nice prototype details added to it, so they're pretty much good to go right out of the box uh, for any of you who just want a ready-to-run model. I'm really impressed with it. All I've done to it at this point is I removed the class lights. I replaced the plow to be more prototypical, painted the headlight, uh, patched out the number boards. Um, and that's pretty much it. I did remove the handrails as well, too, but this is going to be our uh, subject that we're going to be working on. So, I'll set it up here on my bench carefully and I have it at an angle so I can work at it comfortably here and still have the camera focused in on it so if I can zoom in here on this particular area of the fuel tank I'm gonna start working on this now what I'm starting with to get the color I'm using Anita's acrylic gray charcoal gray and I'm using a uh, flat white now I'm using a fine tip medium brush, something like this. I believe this is a liner brush, yeah, a number uh, number one liner, um, and I'm going to be using this. I have over in the corner, and though you can't see it, uh, my paper where I can take my brush and mix my paint together. So I'm creating a f somewhat of a wash here, uh, not too diluted, but enough to have the paint uh, go on smooth. But I can focus this here. This is the paint color I'm going to be using is this light gray color to try to match that primer gray. Now if you're doing a CP rail locomotive, uh, you want to use like a red or a pinkish tone to start with, but that's a whole other story. But This is the same basic idea though. Just create a slight wash, get a bit of paint on your brush, not that much, just enough. And then we'll move back over to the model here. And the corner will start at the top with the air tank, okay? So I'm just going to get in here. I'm going to start just kind of almost sloppily brushing it on like this because this is quite frankly this is exactly how it looks on the prototype as I'm following the prototype photos here now this is the first coat and I'm just getting all the paint on the brush and blending it out like that okay so you can see it's not too hard simple very easy okay so I'll go get some more paint load my bristles back up back up excuse me now what we're going to do is the fuel tank okay so as I take the brush watch the technique here see how I have the fine tip angle angled in like this also I'm holding my hand with my other hand or I'm holding my fist with my other hand to have complete control and I'm only using finger motion here to do this and I'm just going to start brushing this on like this very very sloppily now I know you guys think what, what the hell is he doing right now don't worry it'll all make sense in a second you'll see exactly what I'm doing in just a second and this is the first wash I will follow behind and add more as I go but really I'm just putting the the starter 
wash on this. And then I'm gonna take <clears throat> I'm gonna take a little bit more and I'm gonna get up here in the corner. I know you can't see it. It's just a little more paint, and I'm gonna tuck it underneath the air tank to resemble the rest of the peel paint on the uh, interior of the tank. And on these atherin units, you can take the fuel tank off if you want to do it that way if it was easier for you. But I'm just gonna go ahead and fill this little area in. I'll come back to it later and um, fill it in a little more. But I'm just gonna put some paint in there to start. Just enough. And I'm just gonna blend it out just a little bit. Nothing crazy. I've got a piece of hair in there that's gonna drive me crazy, so let me get my tweezers so I can remove that little obstruction. Uh, tell you what, I'll use my knife. Here we go. Okay. <clears throat> now, that's the first wash, and you can see it dries very, very quickly. Um, and now I can go ahead and, and load my bristles up and basically repeat this process. So, on the top tank, I'm not going to do the same technique, but I'm actually going to put a heavier layer of paint at the top of this blotchy faded paint effect, or the chipping paint effect rather, and I'm going to just paint it on there like this. And you might have to do this several times, it just depends how heavy the chipping is, but this is pretty well washed over, so it's pretty it's pretty blotchy still, but some of these SP units, I mean, it's completely whited out on some of these uh, patchy effects. So it's just, refer to your prototype photos and do this to your judgment and, and how the prototype looks as well. So again, I'm going to follow behind, and I'm going to blend all this together with my fade coat. Keep the strokes vertical. Just like this. Now see I'm trying to be a little bit more detailed this time around. I'm not being as sloppy like the first time. Being a little bit more precise and I have the uh, brush flat up against the fuel tank like this. And again just blending it out nice and, uh, nice and gently. And again on the front here, we'll just start to finish this up. Pick up a little more paint. out okay so it's looking pretty ugly at this point right I know no uh, you can don't tell me about it okay anyway now what we're gonna do is we're gonna start taking some of this paint off with a wet q-tip or a dry q-tip, a uh, relatively damp q-tip, I'll say that. This isn't loaded with moisture, it's sort of dry. Matter of fact, I'll dry it off, I'll leave in a little more by... Uh